Hi everyone, welcome back to another tutorial and today I'm going to show you how to connect your Ubiquiti access point to your Microtik router. So what I have here is, the, is a Microtik Applight and I have a Ubiquiti Nano Station Local M2 and I'm going to show you how to connect, connect it to your router to get internet access. So the first thing that we're going to do is to configure the Microtik router and how you do that is to plug your Ethernet cable into either port 2 to 3, any of these ports from 2 to 3. And after which, you're going to plug the other end into your computer. We are not going to use port 1 because port 1 is designated for your internet connection, which is like your modem. Uh, so we are not going to use that. So, the, so I'm going to head over to the computer and show you how to configure your router. After which, I'm going to show you how to configure your access point. Alright, so I'm now connected to the router. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just check the bridge to ensure that the port that I'm going to connect the access point to is in the default bridge. If you're, if you're running a hotspot, you need to ensure that the port that you are going to use to offer the internet service through the access point, that port is also in your bridge that is associated with your hotspot. But from, from my access point, they are all in the default bridge. So I don't need to make an adjustment there. The next thing that I need to do is just to check the addresses. And the default address for my bridge is 192.168.88.1 slash 24. And you need to make a note of your network because this is what you're going to use in order to configure your access point. So when when I go over to the access point and start configuring it, you'll see how I use some of these settings. The other thing that we need to look at is the pool, the address pool, and this is where the, the DHCP server offer addresses from. And the pool by default skip a few addresses. So you realize from address IP address 88.2 right up to 10. So it start to 9 is skipped from the DHCP server. So you can actually static those IP addresses and assign them to your different devices such as an access point so here we don't need to do anything but if, if there was a situation where you were offering where the IP address was 88.1 88.2 or something like that you'd have to make an adjustment because you don't want the DHCP server trying to issue the same IP address as your access point so those are the main things that you just need to check on your router before um, configuring your your access point so I'm going to connect to the access point now and configure it so there are a few things that you need to do the first thing is to change your network settings but before I do that I'm going to disconnect my router and connect the access point to my computer directly so now we are going to configure the ubiquity access point so we need to connect the access point to your computer. You're going to need two cables. One is going to connect to the LAN port and the other end is going to connect, going to plug into the PoE port on your power brick. Next, you're going to use another cable and this cable is going to be used to connect the access point to your computer. So you're going to plug it into the LAN port and then this end is what you're going to use to plug into your computer. So I'm going to show you now how to configure your Ethernet adapter on your PC uh, to communicate with the router and with the access point and then we're going to and then I'm going to show you how to configure the access point. So let us head over to the computer right now and start configuring. So the access point is now connected. So what I'm going to do is to go to my network adapter. 
So I'm going to right click and go to Open Network and Sharing Center. You can click on your adapter, go to Properties, and uh, double click on Internet Protocol version 4. Double click on that. And I'm going to set an IP address here. The default IP address for Ubiquiti access points are 192.168.1.20. That's a default. So in order for me to connect to it, I, have, I would have to set an IP that is within that same subnet. So I'm going to use 192.168.1.20. Say two and uh, press tab, and the windows will automatically fill out the subnet mask. But this is a subnet for this network because it is a, it is a slash 20, 24. Press OK, OK, and uh, now I'm going to open the browser and I'm going to go to the access point, and the address is 192.1. 68.1.20 You'll be greeted with this message. Just click continue to the next page. And uh, the default username is UBNT. And the password is the same thing, UBNT. You're going to select your country. Hit agree. Click login. So I'm now logged in to the access point and this is how it looks. Then I'm going to go to wireless and I'm going to change the wireless mode to access point. And I'm going to use for the SSID I'm going to use TKS JA as the SSID for the channel width. Um, you can use um, 40 or 20 but 40 will give you a higher throughput than than 20 so you can leave it at 40 and for the channel now we leave that as auto unless you have a specific channel that you want to operate on because what auto will do is that the access point will change frequency when there's saturation of a particular frequency. So if there's congestion or a lot of noise on a particular channel, your access point will will switch to the least noisy channel. So you can leave it on auto. Uh, for the power output, you can leave it as a max. So this is the maximum power output for this access point, which is 23 um, decibel. And for the rate and the data rate, um, you can leave that as is. So we're going to go head on to security and I'm going to select WPA2AES and I'm going to put in a password. So this is a password that when a client is connecting to your access point, that is a password that they will need to use to connect. Click change and by default, the access point will ask you to change the default password. So the default password is UBNT and uh, I'm going to just put in a password hit change now I need to just go back to this tab here and this tab um, access the ubiquity access point as a feature named Earmax is a proprietary feature that their access point uses to communicate, it, it has some features where it, it switch between the channel. So it's like there's a there's some channels that are not really used by the normal Wi-Fi spectrum, and what this does, it switch bit to those channels. But if this is enabled, your clients who are using smartphones or laptops won't be able to connect to your access point. So you need to uncheck this for it to work. So this will make the access point behave as if just a no, as a normal access point. So I've configured the wireless. Now we're going to head over to network. And the default mode is bridge. So we're going to leave it there. And for the IP address, we're going to set the IP address to the same address um, range as our router. 
So the router is 88. So the IP address that we're going to give this is 88.2. And for a router, it's the, the gateway is 88.1. And for the DNS, it's the same 88.1. Because these are because our router is running already on a DNS server, so we set those to point to our DNS server to our router. And that is the only thing that we're going to change here. So hit change advance. And the only thing that I'm going to enable here is install EIRP control. This has to do with the with the power output of the access point. So this gives you more control over the output. So I'm going to enable it. And then in services, you can enable your NTP client. This will update the time on the, on the access point and allow you to see the logs at a particular time, correct time, that is. If you are on an NTP server in your network, you could change this address to your address if you need to. It change and then we're going to go to system and then in system now you have the option um, of changing the access point username and but we're not going to do that now and the device name so you can change the device name if you want and here you can change your time zone so I'm, I'm going to change it to mine and then it change so although I'm clicking change, it doesn't apply the settings uh, um, yet, as yet, until when I click apply up here. So this apply actually apply all the changes that I've made so far. So I'm going to click apply, and now the access point, it's, it's applying all the changes that I've made so far. After this is completed, I would need to change my network adapter back to what it was which is auto as you can see the network adapter is disabled and you realize it it has redirect me to 80.2 which is the access point but i won't be able to connect to it because my network that i'm on is is 0 slash 24 network so in order to connect back to this access point i would have to change my network back to what it was but what I'm going to do is just select obtain IP automatically and set my DNS to obtain automatically also and now I'm going to connect my router to connect my access point to the router and then the router will actually give me an IP address from that network and the access point will automatically connect to the router. So close these and I'm going to now disconnect the access point from my PC and plug it into the router. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Alright, so we have finished configuring the access point. No. So we have configured the access point and the router. So we are going to connect the access point to your router to get internet access through it. The cable that you use to connect to your PC, you're going to plug that into any one of these available ports. So I'm just going to plug it in any one of them. And now this access point will be able to communicate with your router and provide internet access wirelessly. The connections on the power brick remains the same. The green cable goes to the LAN port and connects into any one of the available ports on your router and excluding port 1 as I said before the port 1 port 1 is for internet and this gray cable plugs into the PoE port and the PoE port gives the access point power on ethernet at the same time so I'm going to know head back to the computer now and then show you how both of them are working together so I've just connected the access point to the router and uh, 
the router is now and now my network um, adapter is plugged the cable from my network adapter is plugged directly into the router and the login page for the access point is now up so I can log, log back into the access point and we can look at the status of the access point in the stations section it will show you the, 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 the stations that are connected or the clients that are connected to the, to the access point so if I head over to to my router IP neighbors and it will show you the client the devices that are within your network but the devices are as to have a feature um, the network discovery feature enabled so now we are seeing the access point and it is now communicating with our router and it is on the same network as our router so the next thing that I'm going to do is that I'm going to do a test where I'm going to use um, I'm going to connect to the access point using a, another device and you'll be able to see whether or not it's working or well, I think one thing that I should have changed is the channel width from 40 to 20 because um, just remember um, what that will do 40 when your channel is 40 it only will allow one device to connect to it so a channel width of 20 will allow multiple devices so I just so that is what I need to change so I'm going to try and connect again so I've, I've connected to the access point now so I'm going to go back to main hit on station and it should show me the device that is connected so so now I have one device that is connected to the access point and it gives me the IP address 252.88.252 so if I go back into my router and go to IP DHCP server I'm supposed to see in the DHCP server on my router issuing that IP so now we have completed the configuration and we have proven that the access point is not working properly with your with the router so that is how you would connect your ubiquity access point to your Mikrotik router to to get internet access so that's it for this tutorial if you like this video please give me a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed please remember to do so so thanks for watching